Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, um, into your homes, onto your phone, whichever way you're looking at me. Um, thank you for stopping by. If it's the first time you're passing through, well, there must have been something that caught your eye to make you stop on my channel, so I do appreciate that. If you like what I say, you can always click on the thumbs up. If you don't, you can put the thumbs down. If you think somebody else might be interested, you can share, and that's how it goes. And if you'd like to know about other things I talk about, you can hit the subscribe button. I'm quite inconsistent, so if you're looking for, if you think I'm going to be talking about the same topic, you'll be disappointed because I don't. I talk about a variety of things. And for my returning subscribers, thank you for your support. Thank you for interacting with each other and for giving me feedback. Now, today I wanted to talk about the impact of coronavirus on your sick pay for those of you who are fully employed or self-employed or who are on zero contracts. The impact can be devastating. Now, when we think about the coronavirus, a lot of us, we're sitting in our homes and thinking, well, I'm not going to any crowded places. I'm not going to catch it. And, you know, and that is their um, philosophy. I'm not going to go to abroad. I'm not going to go abroad. So therefore, I won't catch it. But then they don't realise that by isolating themselves, it has implications. By not going on holiday, it has implications. Because like Flybee, they've gone into administration because of the coronavirus. People aren't flying anywhere. So now they've gone into administration. All those people have lost their jobs. And it's so sudden. So you can imagine the impact on all of those workers who work for Flybee. Now, we also have sick pay. Now, if you have, if you've gone on holiday somewhere and they have decided to not let you fly back for some containment issue, do you know that your employer is not obliged to pay you sick pay because you're not technically sick? Also, if a medical expert says to you that you have to self-isolate, you are not your employer is not obliged to pay you sick pay. Now, if your employer says to you, look, you need to take two weeks off work and self-isolate, then you will get sick pay. So the, so the thing is, is that it's not a question of, oh, I'm OK, I'm all right, Jack. We could be impacted in a lot of ways. And the more we don't do business, I mean, I think, like I said before, the online businesses will probably do very well. But the more we don't go out and help other businesses to survive, the more businesses are going to close, the more it's going to impact us, the more isolated we're going to become. And it's going to affect, it's going to affect your income. And the thing is, you might say, OK, I've got a decent job. But suppose these businesses close down. I know that even people with decent jobs, they'll often say, oh, you know, oh, I can't wait till I get my next salary. I've gone into my overdraft this month. Or, you know, I can't I can't wait to get to my next salary because um, I need to buy this. Some people live from week to week, from month to month. A lot of people live that way. A lot of people can't wait till that next check comes in so they can pay their rent, do what they need to do. And in a time where it's so difficult to save, a lot of people don't save. So if for some reason these some institutions shut down and all of a sudden you can't, they can't pay you, what do you do? Have you made preparations for something like that? Have you made preparations for having two weeks without sick, without sick pay? Because what they will say to you, they'll say, well, you can have the two weeks off, but we're not paying you. Some organisations... Oh, how do I turn it off? Yeah, some organisations will, um, will pay depending on what type of organisations they are. But there'll be many that won't. Remember when Trump closed down um, the whole of the, 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 the White House and all those people just like that didn't have any money? We, do know, we don't know what's being planned. 
I think it's very, very strange that despite the vigilance, you know, every, you know, all you keep on hearing is about this coronavirus, more people have got it, this and that. Is it a ploy to just shut everything down? Is this the plan? We don't know. We really don't know what this is all about. All we know is that everybody will be affected whether or not you you catch the coronavirus or you don't. So I'm talking about sick pain. I just want to give you a little background about whether or not and how you're entitled to it. And especially, you know, self-employed. If they haven't taken out insurances before now, let's hope they would have done against, you know, loss of pay. I mean, I know that a lot of small businesses, they have this um, loss of pay because I got written to the other day, asked me if I wanted to take out a loss of pay. Um, and they do it for landlords as well. When they don't get their um, rent, they can actually have an insurance that secures them against people not paying their rent. But if it's happening now, you're going to try and get an insurance now. Can you imagine the prices of insurances is going to go through the roof? That's all I can say. So um, apparently there's a fifth of UK's working population that could be off sick. That is not definitive. It could be hype. We don't know. Um, if you can't work and need to self-isolate, what are your rights? If you're not sick, but your boss tells you not to come to work, you should get your usual pay. But there are a few protections in place for those who self-isolate. There is no statutory right to pay if you're not sick, but can't work because a medical expert has advised you to self-isolate or go into quarantine. If you develop symptoms, could you afford to take two weeks off without pay? That is the question. A lot of us couldn't. A lot of us depend on each monthly salary or each week to pay our rent, to pay our mortgage, to pay our bills. That's why we're working. And then to have two weeks taken out of that, that is a lot of money for a lot of people. Did you know that if you're abroad and get detained because of precautionary measures, you do not have a legal right to be paid? Employers, therefore, have the discretion to apply their own pay policies. They could pay statutory minimum sick pay or anything up to the full wages for several months. Greg's, which is a baker in the UK, said they are willing to pay workers who self-isolate due to the coronavirus. Now, who would think a little company like Greg's, well, it's probably quite a big company, would be paying staff to self-isolate. That sounds like a good company to me. And their cakes are quite delicious too. Um, Employment Dispute Resolution Service, ACAS, says employers must resolve workers' genuine concerns about the virus. This could mean offering flexible working, for example. If an employee does not want to go in, they may be able to arrange with arrange with their employer to take the time off as holiday or unpaid leave, but the employer does not have to agree to this. Well, hopefully you've got a reasonable employer that will agree to it if you can afford to take two, two weeks off unpaid leave. And the thing is, it's ironic because you're more likely to have to take that two weeks unpaid leave when you've just come from leave. If an employee refuses to attend work, it could result in disciplinary action. So if your boss says, look, you've got to come in, do you come in and spread it all over the place? And the thing is, when you have um, situations like this, you force people to lie because people will come into work because they don't want to lose two weeks pay, even though they could be at risk of having the virus. And what does that do for the people who are in the workplace? They can get contaminated. So even though you, as an individual, haven't been anywhere, you come to work and, you know, I, I'm, when I, I'm always saying these stories about people at work coughing and spluttering. And, you know, it's really unnerving and it's even more unnerving, especially when you know they've just come from these countries that are tainted with the virus or we've been told are tainted with the virus. 
and they're coming coughing and spluttering because they feel as though they've either used up all their annual leave or they don't want it to look bad on their sick record so they come to work and that happens a lot a lot of people say oh I can't take any time off work how is it going to look I've already taken this amount of time off sick. I can't take off any more. So they come in and contaminate everybody else. So you're entitled to have time off if you have a dependent. It's called carer's pay. I'm not quite sure how many organisations give that, though, um, who need you in an emergency. For example, if your child's school is closed or they need and they are sick and you need to look after them. That's another thing. You've got these kids that go to different countries and they come back in the school. They could pass it on to your bloody kids. They pass it on to your kids and you have to stay home with your child. Carers, carers pay um, at certain organisation is just one day and they allow you one day carers pay and during that one day you're supposed to make alter alternative arrangements for somebody to look after your child or the, or the dependent until they're better so they, they're not going to give you ten, ten, two weeks carers pay so you have to think about all of these things What else have I got? Number of weeks you have to wait to claim universal credit if you're out of work. And that's another thing. They're saying, OK, if you're not entitled to statutory pay and your employer isn't paying you, you can go to universal credit. Five weeks it takes. And universal credit saying, oh, you can call us. On what number, please? It's not that easy. They'll, they'll, they'll direct you to a coach. If you haven't got a coach, can you imagine how long that's going to take to set up? The amount of time off must be reasonable and there, might, there is no statutory right of pay for this. Check your employment contract or other human resources department. Employees have legal rights to sick pay, but the amount they get is likely to be far below their wages if they work full time. The statutory minimum sick pay is £94.25 if you are sick for four full days or more in a row and earn on average at least £180 per week. So if you earn, if you're sick for four full days, for more than four, yeah, if you're sick for more than four full days and you earn at least £118 per week, your, your statutory sick pay will be £94.25 a week. However, many organisations offer their staff sick pay, which goes beyond this. So what about these people on zero gig economy workers, agency workers, casual workers and workers on zero contracts are likely to be entitled to receive at least statutory sick pay, thank goodness. Um, what else have we got here? If you are sick with the coronavirus, your entitlements may depend on your type of employment and what is in your contract says Tom Neal, senior advisor at ACAS. Gig economy workers are typically classified as self-employed, meaning they are not eligible for statutory sick pay. Insurance policies for accident, illness and unemployment may cover wages lost to the coronavirus infection. So let's hope that those gig economy workers and self-employed have taken out um, insurance policies for illness and unemployment. I think most sensible people would have done because you never know when you're going to be out. And if self-employment, if that's all you have, that's the only income you've got guaranteed, it would make sense to um, take out an insurance against it, wouldn't it? So sickness cover is unlikely to cover the cost of self-isolation or loss of earnings if work dries up because people are staying at home in response to the virus. You see? So, you know, if if work dries up, because of the virus and you're stuck at home, what do you claim? You can't claim sickness benefit. Even though it's a sickness related problem. If you have this kind of protection policy, check what cover you have with your insurer. Work and Pensions Minister Justin Tomlinson attracted criticism when he suggested people rely on benefits if they do not work during the outbreak. 
if they could not work during the outbreak. But the thing is, why is he going to receive criticism? If you can't work, you need some money coming in. I don't think this system can cope. I mean, they can't even cope with those the ordinary people who have been claiming universal credit. And then to make it worse, they are pulling, I think, the 31st of March, universal credit is going to come under one system. At the moment, it's kind of divided by different systems. So it's going to be under one system. And hopefully everything will get everything will be synchronized and coordinated and it will work well and we won't have all these um, loopholes and gaps of information, gaps in information, but we don't know. Ah oh dear, those employ those whose employers ask them to stay away from the workplace due to the coronavirus concerns who do not qualify for statutory sick pay may be able to claim universal credit or new style employment and support allowance. So that must be something new. New style. What's that? What do I call that? New style employment and support allowance. All these bloody fancy names and they all mean the same thing. Universal credit claimants have to wait up to five weeks for their first payment. However, given that the government forecasts up to one fifth of the workforce is due to be off sick, meaning that a significant number of people could struggle to make ends meet. People with no sick pay who may not be able to afford two weeks in self-isolation. So like I said, peeps, you better start saving from now. Cut down on your spending. If you can't save, cut down on your spending. Cut down on your spending. Just try to look at your what you're spending your money on. Is it really necessary what you're buying? Is it really necessary? And if you bought it recently, take it back to the shop if you haven't worn it. Alternatively, workers who are unable to work because of health conditions can claim employment and support allowance, but only if they've be, only if they have paid national insurance for at least two to three years. So health condition, that's obviously different from sick pay. So you see these little subtle um, changes in names. So I would think that if you catch a coronavirus, it's going to be a health condition, but I bet it isn't. I bet it isn't for the purposes of paying out. But who am I? What do I know? Like I said, when I do these videos, it's just my opinion. I'm just putting my little two pence worth in. The rate for the first 13 weeks is up to £57.90 per week if you're aged under 25 or up to £73.10p for over 25s. It then rises to as much as £111.65 depending on individual circumstances, I guess. Maybe if you've got children or a carer or something or disabled. But I wonder why they don't just make it round figures. Instead of £57.90, why can't they just make it 58 73 pounds 10p. Why don't they just make it 73 quid? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it probably makes sense to them. Probably has a it probably ends up as a round figure at the end of a year or something. A spokesperson for the UK Government Department for Works and Pensions said our staff are ready to support people if they are affected. We urge them to contact us by phone, a phone that never works, or their work or by their work their work coach or via their online journal. And if you haven't got a work coach yet, you know what a long, um, a long um, process that's going to be. Sometimes the most simplest of words don't come to my head. If people have to stay home on less than full pay, more people will go into debt. The Money and Pension Service estimates that 16.7 million people are struggling or squeezed, and these may be particularly vulnerable. They're more unlikely to have financial resilience to get through a period of reduced income. It often takes only one knock to income to push people into a problem debt, says Sue Anderson of Step Change Debt Charity. Once the immediate threat of the coronavirus does pass, it really, and it pff, depends on who's controlling it, of course, it really must be a long-term policy goal to improve financial resilience and the way that the welfare system works so that more people are better able to weather the storm. 
financial shocks without being tipped into problem debt. And that's it. So we've got to be careful, people. Um, just try, try, try. See how you can cut down on stuff. Because, like I said, the coronavirus, it's not just about travelling and going to these isolated areas and mingling with people on the underground. It's not just about that. And if you think that way, you're not going to make enough preparations. So just make sure you make sufficient preparations. Don't spend frivolously at this time and just try to do your best. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.